Yo, what's going on? It's someone that's no one, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I wanted to talk about the lives of drug users who do well under society's standards. Most of the time, I think people who consume drugs are automatically given a bad rep, or at the very least, there's this belief that they aren't necessarily being productive with their lives. And I think that it may be more so the type of person you are, rather than the habit itself. But there are many different situations and factors that impact this, so in this video, we're going to explore some and see how some users out there can live fairly decent lives or even successful ones. I take this to be one of the most important factors when determining whether or not you'll be productive as a drug user. If as a person, you genuinely enjoy working out, making art, just getting things done, or whatever it may be, those qualities can naturally carry over easily when a person picks up a drug habit. But it also depends on how you take a substance in, and if that motivates you to take more action. Often, people may turn to substances to make what they're doing more enjoyable, are not as bad. This may be things they have to do or want to do. Sometimes it may be the opposite though. You may have a crutch with an addiction, but you're still able to do enough to get by fine and dandy. At the end of the day, we're all different. We all have our own experiences with substances, which may better enable or disable us when it comes to living our lives. And we all have different preferences on how we want to live. Your environment, pretty much. Our environment helps shape us, and drug use can lead to many things. The example I want to bring up is Motley Crue, which, if you don't know, they're a popular heavy metal band that formed in the early 80s. Now in the entertainment business, it probably isn't too surprising to find druggies, but these guys just went wild at it, doing heroin and all kinds of shit while still performing shows. There's a documentary on Netflix called The Dirt, if you're interested in learning more. But them being involved in the musical atmosphere certainly motivated and influenced them further to do what they did. Another popular example I want to bring up is The Wolf of Wall Street, a movie based on Jordan Belfort and his penny stock schemes. They hid nothing really in this, and it even has an explanation what these substances did for him. Quote, I take quaaludes 10 to 15 times a day for my back pain, Adderall to stay focused, Xanax to take the edge off, pot to mellow me out, cocaine to wake me back up again, and morphine, well, because it's awesome. Now Jordan Belfort made tens of millions of dollars, and even if it was scandalous, there is a certain degree of organization and skill needed to set up what he did, and with a drug list like that, it's clear that drugs won't stop you from doing this. Now on the other hand, if you grew up around heroin houses, gang violence, poverty and whatnot, you have to consider that the habit you pick up is going to be less driven by external activities such as making music or making a business, whatever it may be. But especially when there is a collective interest beyond just drug use, your environment will most likely push you towards that interest. I wanted stimulants to have their own section because it's commonly the class that has more well-functioning users. Why is that? Well, because it's stimulating. It's the one class of substances that has a solid argument that it directly makes you want to be more active. But I want to say that more active doesn't necessarily mean better functioning as a person. It may influence you to take part in activities that may cause more harm than good. For example, this could be criminal activity or hypersexuality. The stimulation you get may be more distracting slash recreational rather than helpful. So just because it's a stimulant, it doesn't mean you'll automatically be productive. This comes back to what kind of person you are and how you take the substance in. But even if you just think about caffeine, you can get an idea of how a stimulant would motivate you to do things. But with amphetamines especially, it's easier to get lost into something like schoolwork, make work feel like it flies by, socialize easier, or just do the things that you have to do. Stimulants can better promote these things, but I think there still requires a degree of intrinsic motivation for this to happen. This somewhat follows the idea of stimulants, but more so the idea of just using a drug to achieve a specific state. Like Jordan Belfort said, 
each substance can have a specific use. Sometimes you may feel the need to pop that Adderall to get through exams, or maybe drinking alcohol helps take the edge off in social situations, or maybe smoking pot just calms you in the right way so you can go about your day smoothly. This is what drugs are supposed to be, tools to help us. Most people won't look to substances for this type of aid though, at least to the degree we've been talking about. Psychedelics are another great example though. Microdosing can directly motivate you without having a strong apparency of a normal trip. Whatever the substance may be though, I do think there is a mindset that if I take X, then it will help me achieve Y easier. I do think this notion can stand true, but I also think it can be self-destructive in ways, all depending on the nature of the habit. But when done right, the drugs themselves can make a user more functional. So now I want to bring up another example, alcoholics. I think many people can misjudge alcohol, especially because of how acceptable it has been in our culture. But oftentimes, you can find someone somewhere, probably in manual labor, who drinks a lot. Now just because a person wants to drink on the job, or wakes up and has a beer or whatever, doesn't mean they can't maintain a fairly stable lifestyle. I guess you can say the same thing with cigarettes. These things often give us a perception that make things easier for us to get by. But ask any doctor out there and they'll tell you otherwise. That goes without saying. But we want what we think we need, though that may not necessarily be what we really need. Filling this need does aid in functioning though, but the actual good it does is highly debatable. Which brings us to the last section I want to bring up, that being functional on substances doesn't necessarily mean you don't have a problem. People see that if someone has a stable lifestyle while still using drugs, that it must not be that bad. They more so treat it as normal for that person, or at least it's more acceptable. But the truth of it is, if you need to use substances, it's a behavioral crutch. It's called well-functioning or high-functioning because by definition, having to use a substance for functional behavior is dysfunctional in itself. But outside of that, whether it's an actual problem depends. Part of it's your perspective on the manner. If everything in your life is steady, but you happen to do drugs, it can be okay. It can be comparable to taking a vitamin or like eating food, but it is a double-edged sword. In The Wolf of Wall Street, that's made clear. Substance use can lead to addiction. Depending on the severity of the addiction, it can lead to poor decision making and thus lead to your life falling apart. And one last example I want to bring up is a friend of mine, Niall. He's a regular user of dextroamphetamine as it mainly puts him in the mood to work on his business and run this poker group on the side. Now, while he was turning out great work, he noted to me that it takes a strain on his health from time to time. He would get into some binges here and there where he would end up staying up for three or four days at a time. So you have to be aware of what these substances do to you and how they can make you behave. Ultimately, just because you're able to live up to society's standards or exceed that, doesn't mean you're necessarily 100% A-OK. -okay. So we're gonna leave it there today. If you guys enjoyed this video, want me to talk about more things like this, let me know in the comments below and we'll do it. Like the video, of course, if you liked it, Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow the socials. It's been someone that's no one. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.